Welcome to Bible at Home, a educational and devotional offering of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Bismarck, North Dakota. On this week, uh, second Sunday of Easter in 2022, we uh, look at the story from Luke 24 about the road to Emmaus. And uh, just a reminder, as we prepare to hear uh, this story from Luke, uh, where have you seen God recently in your life? Where have you seen um, God active and um, guiding us and challenging us all along along the way here? And uh, we continue as we read this story, uh, the taste we want to get, things we want to keep in mind. Uh, what is God doing in this story? What is Jesus trying to tell us? Uh, what part do humans play in God's plan? What in the story surprises or maybe unsettles you? And what gives you comfort? And what questions do you have about this story? So let us go to Luke 24. Now on that same day, we're talking about the day Easter Sunday, okay? Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Notice they didn't see who he was. So that sense is not helping them. And he, Jesus, said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? Jesus asked them, What things? Now notice uh, Cleopas, we have a name. Um, it appears to be more of a a Gentile name. So again, this is written to the Gentiles. So uh, we want to have uh, people in there that they would recognize. And um, just a little recap here. You know how Luke likes to do his recaps. And, um, you know, the death and death of Jesus was pretty, pretty much the news of the day. But notice what Jesus, what things? Is he trying to open them up? They replied the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. They're laying out uh, how they see Jesus and what their hopes were. They continue, yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astonished us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they did not see him. So they are repeating what we had just heard in the story from Easter last week. Um, so we're bringing it out to the next level. These are people who have heard the witness and are still processing it. But what happens with Jesus? Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? The very thing that the angels had said, didn't, I, didn't he tell you that he would, that as the Messiah, would have to suffer and enter into his glory and die? Then, this is the part I love, then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them all the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So Luke gives us this little teaser about what is to will be coming 
in Acts next week, um, that we get these stories of, um, of how it is that Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament. Now, we're not told here what it is he said, but it's a little bit of a teaser. Uh, it's like you've got to go read the next book. <laughs> And still, they don't recognize him. And he's, you know, he's, and I just, what I find hilarious in Luke is that, you know, he's he's not in the tomb. He's back out on the road. He's back out during ministry. Um, he's not even going to let death stop him from sharing this word of God. But uh, they offer him hospitality, and he accepts it. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us when he was talking to us on the road while he was opening the scriptures to us? Were not our hearts burning from what they had heard? That's this gets to be this Holy Spirit. That's how the Holy Spirit then works um, in the Acts, in the Acts of the Apostles. When people hear the word or have heard the word, the Holy Spirit has something to work with. And it's the breaking of the bread. Isn't it interesting how what, what seems to be an ordinary thing, but for Luke, it's a sacrament. This is how we even today say Jesus reveals himself to us is in the sacraments. And uh, they realize now that as he had talked, these scriptures were being opened up to them. That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. So we're getting all of these witnesses coming together, some who have seen Jesus and some who are proclaiming what, they, what others have seen and heard. So we begin to see how this word is going to be spread how this good news, this resurrection news is spreading. So let us pray. Mysterious and divine presence, too often our hearts burn within us because our bodies know before our minds that you are here working in us and through us in this world. Open our eyes and help us to recognize you in all places and in all people for the sake of the one whose presence is never far, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, our bodies, the creation, the very parts um, that God created, that spirit within us, that new life within us recognizes him. And Jesus is the teacher today, so our blessing is Jesus is my teacher. And as part of the balance, um, if you'd read Psalm 30, um, Many of the old, you know, Old Testament psalms and prophets had words um, that at the time didn't make sense. But now, with the resurrected Jesus, it would be interesting to go back and read those with those lenses, those eyes and those ears. For example, here in Psalm 30, verse 5, For his anger lasted only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. Isn't that what they were experiencing? So uh, as we uh, continue to follow, uh, try, to find, try to find Jesus. Where in, where, in Jeru where in Israel is Jesus? Maybe it should be the uh, name of the last chapter in, uh, in Luke's gospel. But uh, we'll find out next week when we go into Luke's second book, The Acts of the Apostles how this word is to be spread. Have a great week and we'll see you next week.